Hello traders, this is the Zigzag Man and this lesson is about fundamental analysis. Basically fundamental analysis is researching a company under many different categories and for day trading you really don't need to do much fundamental analysis a lot of times you will enter a trade on really good or bad news and you'll be out that day the trade might only last an hour or less but when you swing trade uh, that means basically you're holding it more than a day. You could be holding it for two or three days and just playing the hourly chart. You could be playing it for a week or two or three. And you really have to know quite a bit about the company before you even enter the trade. And then at the end of each trading session, it only takes about uh, 10 or 15 minutes to check for recent developments on the fundamental side and to also look at the hourly, daily, weekly chart. And then after you do the fundamental analysis of the recent news and look at the technical analysis of its charts, then at the end of every day you're going to decide whether you want to hold the stock another day or if you will sell it the next day. So I only use two sites for the most part to do my fundamental analysis. That is the Yahoo Finance site and also finbiz.com. Now, I always start with Yahoo. One thing about these two sites is they're, I use two sites because quite often their information doesn't match exactly so I liked if I find a very big difference in like a number uh, of outstanding or shares or, or, or number of shares in the float I will go to a third site to try and verify it and for that I usually go to bloomberg.com quite a few other ones I use but today I'll just concentrate on Yahoo Finance and finviz.com. So let's take a look at one of my favorite stocks of all time, Akamai. Akamai Technologies. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is we're, we're going to talk about the fundamental analysis you need to do before you actually enter a trade. Okay, and the first thing you're going to want to do is yeah, take a look at a six month chart. I have a bunch of other programs running right now, so this might take a while. And basically, he's moved just in the month of March, and right now it's March the 13th. He's moved from 26 to 32 dollars. So, yeah, that's looking a little bit too far, too fast. It's probably going to be. A, I know they got some really good news, but I'd be kind of scared to jump in there because. He's just gone straight up without any pullbacks. Okay, so you get an idea of where he is in price. Now, we are going to go back to his home page on Yahoo Finance. And the first thing I like to take at is, uh, if you're not familiar with the company, you want to see what he does. You go to the profile page. Okay, And as you can see, any on any page you bring up, on Yahoo Finance, it's got the same menu in the left-hand column. And just about every one of these is something that you should learn uh, what they mean. Anyway, I know what Akamai does, so I won't bother with this page. So what I do next is go to Key. Right under Profile, I go to Key Statistics, because this is where I get most of my information. Okay. Now... The first thing I look at is for the market cap, you know, what their P.E. is. P.E. is price over earnings. It's very important. If it's over 30, that's way too high. Okay, so his 
Forward-looking PE is only 22, which for this type of industry, a technology in the Internet sector, that's pretty average. Mm. His price to sales are positive. His price to book is positive. EBITDA is positive. Okay, so I won't, I won't get into these terms. I'll show you where to find out. Well, let's do that right now. If you don't understand any of these terms, okay, EBITDA, um, you know, what's the float? Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, there's another page here. I'll show you some other, you know, return on investment, ROE, ROI, uh, ROA, return on assets. That's return on equity, return on investment. So what I do is I go, I highly recommend investopedia.com as the best place to search for terms. Let's say you don't know what ROE is. Okay, it's going to bring up quite a quite a few terms. Okay, Re ROE is return on equity. They're also showing return on assets, return on investment. These are all things I'll show you on the Finviz page. Okay, so go to Investopedia. It's right here. Well, I N W W W dot I N B E S T O P E D I A dot com. Investopedia. It's the encyclopedia for investors. Okay. All right, so basically, I don't see any negative numbers here except for quarterly earnings growth year over year. Okay, that's that's kind of what you want to see. I'll show you on the Finviz page how it shows up in different colors. Okay. The, this number here is compared to the S&P 500 weekly change. So Akamai is outperforming the S&P 500 over a yearly basis by 52%. Okay. Now, what, another thing you look for is I always teach my students to always trade stocks that have over a million shares traded per day in this column here. Okay, that's the three-month average volume, daily volume. Here's the 10-day average daily volume. It's increasing because, as you can see on that chart, uh, it was going up. The next most important thing is the share is outstanding and the float. Okay, 172 million is not an unreasonable number. If you're getting up into the 500 million, the billion area, you know, any anywhere between half a billion and a billion shares outstanding is ridiculous, and you should avoid them because they're probably nothing more than a dilution machine where they print shares and dilute shareholder value. So. You know, what you'll also notice is the float is very close to the shares outstanding. That's because only 3.75% are owned by insiders. That's percent of the shares. Okay. Now it also says here percent held by institutions is 90, you know, 89.50%. Uh, not real sure about that. Let's check it somewhere else. That doesn't seem to mesh with. You know, one thing you're looking at, do these numbers make sense? Okay. You know, so check it somewhere else. I want to see what Finvis says about institutional holdings. Okay. Now, uh, you also don't want a large short interest. Uh, a short interest means what percent of the float is being shorted by either individuals or um, institutions. Okay, so... You know, 13.1%, that's pretty high, really, but not bad. Some some stocks are 50 to 70% of the float is being shorted. So, you know, at this time, why would they be shorting it? Because it's, it's kind of like skyrocketing up, okay? Now you compare the share short from the previous month to... What, what is being shorted this month, and as you can see, there's a very slight difference, okay? When you see a really noticeable difference here, that's a, that's a red flag, 
Okay, and Akamai, they used to pay a dividend, but they don't now because of the hard economic times. Okay, so I just want to show you the Finviz site. Okay, if you go to the home page of Finviz, over here on the right side, at the top, you will right next to the word elite, it says search ticker company or as soon as you put your mouse in there, it'll bring up ticker company or profile. I always do ticker because I know my tickers. And I'm going to type in Akamai, A-K-A-M, hit enter. And that will bring up a different type of page that I like because it's got everything on one page. Okay, and I wish I could show you the whole thing at once because um, it just looks better, but you know, it has the chart, it has all of the key statistics all in one area. It's got the recent upgrades and downgrades that actually go back to July of 09. And then it has the most recent news for the last couple of weeks. Well, since the 4th of February. So, the, you know, sometimes, see, Akamai doesn't get a whole lot of news. If it's a stock like McDonald's or something, they have 50 news articles a day. Okay, So it won't show more than a, a few days here of recent news. And then it gives you a description of the company profile. And below that it has insider trading. The green is insiders that are buying. The reddish color is selling and the white is options that they are exercising okay and way down here at the bottom you can go to it says open in Yahoo open in Reuters open in Google those are my three other sources for this kind of information but as you can see Finviz has everything on one page at a quick glance it's got the chart it's got the the fundamental analysis numbers okay and the first thing I do is look over here for the market cap. Okay, if it, it's trading on the S&P 500, that's great. If it says OTCBB or pink, you know, first of all, Finviz doesn't show that, but I'll avoid it like the plague. Okay, no dividend. A PE of 40.95. Okay, that's Akamai. That doesn't look right. Okay, there it is trailing PE. Okay, 40. So a forward-looking PE that's smaller than the current one is good. You want a PE that's reduced. I mean, 40 is too high. 40.79 is too high. Okay. Now, uh, Yahoo Finance updates their information a little quicker than Finviz. But anyway, back to Finviz. Okay, we're looking at a PE here. Forward PE 21.73, 22.18, Okay, 40.79. That's they're very close. Okay, they're peg. I don't pay much attention to that or anything else in here. Okay, long-term debt to equity is zero. That I pay attention to that. Then you go for the EPS trends. Okay, a lot of times these will show up all green or all red. So right now they're they're mostly black, uh, and that means neutral. Okay, so EPS is very important. They are I'll show you on Yahoo what they show as trends. Uh, you're looking for the EPS trend. So uh, EPS next year, a dollar forty-seven, and then you go EPS this year. You know it goes quarter quarter and then year year. So, so this is the quarter EPS. EPS next quarter looks like it's going down. Okay. EPS next year is $1.47. EPS is earnings per share when they report their quarterly or end of the year numbers. Um, reporting companies have to report SEC filings, either an a, uh, 10K for the yearly report or an 8K for the quarterly report. And you know, EPS over the past five years up 25%. Sales past five years up 32%. That's the kind of things you want to see. EPS quarter over quarter minus 2.21. Okay, sales 
that's a negative number, but sales quarter over the quarter were up 12%. It gives a reporting date. When do they report their earnings? Okay. Then we get into the insider ownership, 4%. Institutional, 89 Okay. Institutions, 89. Insiders, 3.75, very close. Okay. Like I said, if there's a huge difference, you want to check somewhere else. Okay. Insider transactions, they actually sold almost half of a percent. No big deal. If you see insider, big red here with a big red number, that's a red flag. Okay. Insider transaction, they actually bought 3.28%. They increased. Okay, return on assets, return on equity, return on investment. They're all positive numbers. Now, if, it, if they're green numbers, that means they're quite large. So a black number would be neutral, but it's also positive in this case. It could be a negative number. Okay, gross margins, operating margins, very nice. Profit margin, 16.97%. That's very nice. Okay. Shares outstanding, 172, the float is 165. Shares outstanding, 172, 165, that checks. Okay. Now, you're also looking for average volume. It's got to be, in my book, it has to be over a million shares traded per day. You know, and look at this volume here, 8.5. Now, when you see a huge run like this and huge volume, that's probably signaling a top, but that's a totally different lesson. Okay. Now, look at the performance for the week, the month, the quarter, the half year, the year, year to date. Very solid numbers. Okay. Previous close and the price were just yesterday's numbers, Friday on the close. Then you go over here and you want to add up, you know, I see more green than red. Uh, a white one is a reiterated. That means they confirm their previous um, either upgrade or downgrade. But lots of greens here, and fairly recently, March the 10th, uh, March the 3rd this year, February the 4th, February the 2nd. So, you know, they gave him a, lo a lot of upgrades because of his most recent earnings report. And look at him go, 26 to 32. That's Akamai for you. I love this stock. He, he can really move. Here was a bad earnings report. I remember that one well. But I know when he gets a bad one, it's usually a time to buy on that huge volume spike because eventually he'll recover. You know, Akamai's a... I've been playing Akamai for years. He's a real easy one. You know, it's got a personality. You have to know the personality. You have to get to know the stock. Okay? Now, once you have decided, hey, I like this one, the the... Fundamental looks great, but then you look at that chart, and like I, when I first looked at it, I said, whoa, buddy, looks like we missed that train. I hate chasing a runaway train. And right about the time you think, wow, that's just so great, it's going to you know, keep doing that forever, we're wrong. Uh, there's got to be a pullback. Just like every time he runs real hard, he'll pull back a bit. So if you really like the company, wait for him to pull back. See, this is the uptrend line. He'll probably pull back to the uptrend line. That would be a decent 30 40% pullback. You're looking for a pullback of no more than, you know, 30 cent, 30%, hopefully. But generally, when there is a breakout into blue sky territory above an area of resistance or an upper trend line that's been broken, it will usually, you know, when the volume dies off, it will usually pull back, sometimes 50%. And that's, in this case, it would be healthy because he has no levels of support here. The first real level of support I see is right right about here. There's also a smaller one right here. But from there to there, the, on this daily chart, there's just no level of support. So doing fundamental analysis does include looking at the charts. You know, uh, generally speaking, that's the first level of support there. Not really. You're looking for a red candlestick. That that's a two day level of support. I don't you know, he might pull all the way back to there. Because like I said, when they break out of an area of resistance, it will some a lot of times 
become an area of support where it might drop and then bounce again. But I know this stock well. I know the news that caused this run, and he probably won't pull back that far. That's why it's a good idea to always play the same stock year, years over years. I have a basket of about no more than 10 of them that I rotate throughout the years because it's not hard to catch up on their fundamental news. You know the story. You know how the st- uh, the chart looks, how it can react. Okay. Well, let's get back to fundamental analysis. Okay. So when you're, let's say you've bought into a stock. Let's say you found another one that wasn't a runaway train, but you actually caught at the bottom of that run because you were paying attention to the news. And so what you have to do every day at the end of the day is check a number of different things. The first thing you'll do is check the headlines because any SEC filings or any material event will come up come up in the um, in the headlines any upgrades or downgrades or anything like that okay so I see a lot of things that aren't related to Akamai you're going to have to especially if a stock gets more than like 10 or 20 news article like Intel Corporation the big chip maker for computers or McDonald's or you know some of those Dow components that uh, just they put all kinds of news in there that aren't related to the stock. It's about you know the Dow, uh, the Dow 30 because they belong to it. Okay, so you're going to check the headlines every day after the close for SEC filings, upgrades or downgrades. You're also looking for any share dilution. Uh, do they do a share buyback? Share dilution is negative. Share buybacks are good. You're also going to go to see if the analysts have changed their opinion. Okay, When you first buy your stock, you need to write down or, or follow, you know, somehow make a note of how many brokers, right here, 20 brokers are following him, um, what is the mean recommendation? Okay, what's the mean target? You got to look to see if any of those have changed, either up or down, and you have to look for upgrades and downgrades. Now, upgrades and downgrades will show up in the headline section. Okay, but the analyst estimates. This is where you look at for your EPS trends. Okay, this is the actual earnings history. Okay. Now, you're on analyst. It's right here. The second one down under analyst coverage. This gives you the estimates for the next, the very top area here, for the next reporting season. Okay? And you can also click on... Oh, that's another page. You could also get information for... No, that's their actual. Okay. Uh, That's another page. So, you're looking at... You know, has the estimate gone up? Has the number of analysts changed? Okay, so it looks like another one jumped on, and you could see from the previous page there were 20. Okay, then you're going for revenue estimates. Is it increasing or decreasing? Okay, it goes quarter to quarter here, and then year to year there. So it looks like they're estimating their revenues will go up in. 2011. It also looks like they're predicting a two million, almost a two million dollar increase in their revenues for next quarter. Okay. Now you get to the earnings history. These are the actual numbers that were reported during their financial reports. Okay. So it starts down in December here at 46. The EPS went to 38, then to 40, to 43, so it's not a straight up or down trend. Okay, What you're looking for is these numbers going from right to left to be increasing if you want to invest on this stock going long. Okay, And then here are the trends. Here are some revisions. You know, which, which one did they change? And then the growth estimates. 
these are very important okay now Akamai for the current quarter isn't going to grow much or next year or this year compared to the industry the sector and the S&P 500 okay but the past five years he's grown 37 percent uh, the next five years it looks like they want him to grow calling for him to grow almost 14 percent okay so it's looking good price to earnings way up uh, uh, compared to the industry sector or the S&P 500 you know it's a great stock it's a wonderful company with a wonderful product they bring streaming videos and things like that to uh, they have a number of products but they bring streaming videos to the internet they power they have the platform that makes them work okay then you have to you know SEC filings you've got to go to college to study this stuff but they will put out a press release every time an SEC filing comes out and you know the ten the annual report the 10k right here came out on March the 1st okay so well let's see when did he start that run gee it was March the 1st you know killer just a great earnings report okay and then uh, 8k is actually a change of any material event 10q is the quarterly excuse me I said the 8k 10k is quarterly 10k is annual now you know if you read one of these things it's just a bunch of legal I mean they give you some pretty good numbers uh, I mean you can click on these and go right to it uh, okay I'm not logged in there so I can't do that uh, let's just see a summary I mean even the summary can be pages long okay I was gonna get to all this in a second okay this is quite long okay we're gonna go back anyway you gotta pay attention to SEC filings because when one of these comes out and it has either really good or bad news it can really move the stock either up or down okay so another thing you wanna do is go when it, when you're talking about 10 K's and 10 Q's you want to go to their balance sheet way down here at the bottom okay now I can't scroll anyway what I do right away is first thing I do is go to the bottom of the page okay and then you know it says these are quarters you can no these are this is the annual data you can also click here to go to the quarterly data but let's just look how we did over the last few years okay from we're looking at December 2008 to December 2009 okay basically I go down and look at the bottom numbers and any number in a parentheses is a negative number and any number not in a parentheses is a positive number okay so we can actually see the last three years here his net tangible assets went from under now I don't know if this is millions or all numbers in thousands okay see right here sometimes it'll say millions all numbers in thousands so it went from just under a billion to a 1.034 billion to 1.221 okay also look at total stockholder equity because that influences you okay now it's trending up from right to left 1.358 1.568 1.738 those are all good numbers okay I look at the assets column right here they're all headed up 1.656 1 1.880 2.087 okay basically you're just looking you you don't want to see as the numbers move from right to left you don't want to see these numbers getting smaller or turning negative or you know if they are negative you want to see them getting smaller instead of bigger okay you know because if you go from a negative 909 to a negative 1.034 that's moving the wrong direction 
but when they're positive numbers like this, you want to see them increasing from right to left as you go from December of 07, de December of 08, December of 09. Okay, so that's a quick look at a balance sheet. You really need to have a college degree in economics to understand these. Uh, I just look. I'm just telling you what I look at. Okay. The income statement, pretty much the same idea. You know, this this shows their revenue, total revenue, in thousands. So, you know, this is almost a billion dollars right here. Their gross profit is very important. De steadily going up from right to left. Operating income or loss going up from right to left. This is uh, shareholder value at the very bottom, one of my favorites. Also increasing, ooh, just barely. Just this year, it took, in 07 to 08, it took a big jump, but from 08 to 09, it almost was unchanged, their net income. Hmm. That's net income, not gross. Gross is up here. Okay, their gross profit. Okay, but this is their net. So you, this is the one you really want to watch down here. Okay. And you also really have to pay, you know, you want to know who the major holders are. These are the institutions. You know, look at some of these names, you know, State Street, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, Vanguard, Barclays. These, these are all huge, very well known. BlackRock, you know, they're massive. I uh, haven't heard of Capital World, but, you know, it gives you a breakdown of all of their holdings. Who owns the most? You know, what it's worth. When you see an increase in institutional holdings, okay? There's 420 institutions holding shares of Akamai. Percent of the float held by institutional and mutual fund owners, 93%. <laughs> My goodness. Number of shares held by all insider and 5% owners. That's only 4%. So this company is basically owned by institutions because they're smart. They know it's a good company. They're making money by investing here now. They used to pay a dividend, like I mentioned, and they don't anymore. We've fallen on hard times. Okay, then you want to look at insiders. What are the company officers doing now? Option exercise, those are hard to figure out, you know. Uh, if you look at an automatic sale or acquisition, you know, I mean, a lot of times it'll just say out purchase. That was just a straight purchase, you know. But these options are hard to figure out. Anyway, if you see in insiders selling all of their shares, there's something wrong with this company because they don't believe in it. Okay, if you see a lot of insiders buying, and and the total right here is, you know, this is for insiders. Okay. Not a big decrease of only half a percent. Somebody only sold 33,000 shares. But look at the net institutional purchases. 34, almost 35 million shares were sold. Now, that 29% is just for that institution. He sold 29% out of his holdings. That doesn't mean that 29% of all institutions sold. Okay. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Stay away from the message boards, especially on Yahoo. They won't tell you anything. My neighbor says, Irish joke, Okay, you know, enough of that. Especially the Yahoo message boards. They are unmoderated and very, can be very, very nasty. 
Do not let your children go to the Yahoo message boards. There is foul language, personal attacks, name calling with very bad words. Okay. So that's about it for fundamental analysis. Once you do the initial and in-depth analysis on the company, that will let you decide whether or not you're going to take a chance on a trade. And then once you are in a trade, every day, every evening, or on the weekends, you know, if, if you're going to buy for uh, a long-term hold kind of a thing, first of all, I would suggest you, you buy a company that pays a dividend. But, you know, this is basically for short-term, mid-term, and long-term swing trading or buy and hold. You have to do this research. You have to get to know your company. You know, keep your, don't quit, keep switching companies. Pick, once you find some good ones, keep them on your list. They will go out of favor once in a while. They, they might be in play for a couple of years and then they just, they'll go flat on you for a while. So you go play some of your other favorite picks, catch up on their news, look at their chart, make a purchase, trade them for a year. And then come back and look at Akamai again, or one of your other favorites. Okay. Um, basically, I only have a stable of probably 10 stocks. But these days, I trade the ETFs a lot more. And generally, they just go with economic data, you know, economic reports, uh, things you can find on the economic calendar, uh, just four or five reports a day, every day. And, you know, you can day trade them or uh, I don't hold my SDS or SSO overnight. Uh, I just day trade them. But yeah, if you don't want to do individual stocks, they are an option. They do pay a dividend. But there's a time de degradation factor in them where you will actually lose value that may be more than the dividend pays. So do your research before you think of swing trading any ETF. Uh, this SPY doesn't have that problem, but these leveraged ETFs like uh, the FAS and FAZ and TZA, you know, the Direxion uh, Bear ETF or the Small Cap Index, there's just hundreds of ETFs. Do your research before you swing trade with a a leveraged ETF. Now, if you want to go with the straight ETFs, you can go with the DIA, which is the diamonds for the Dow, the SPY, which is the spiders for the S&P 500 chart, and the QQQQ, which is the ETF for the NASDAQ chart. And you still need to do some research on them, too, before you purchase. So, okay, let me see if I see anything else on Finviz I need to cover. You know, once you're in, just read the news every day. Look for upgrades, downgrades, you know, uh, after they report earnings. You know, keep, keep your eye on this number maybe once a week. But all you have to do on a daily basis is look at the chart, you know, and... You know, decide for yourself. Okay, I was in here at 28, and he's at 32. Uh, am I going to take profits? You know, I'm sure a pullback will be coming soon. You know, but is it going to give me more? Uh, personally, if I was in at 26 and he's at 32, I'd, I'd be locking in profits right now. Um, he, he cannot keep too far, too fast. He cannot keep up this vertical type of a movement forever. And you know, the, he could actually pull back 50% or more. He could pull back all the way to this line here, which was resistance to make it support. And there's the support right there. So from 32 to 28, uh, what goes up so fast and has no support can come down twice as fast because when a stock falls, it's usually quite a bit quicker than it when it goes up. So just a little hint there. Okay, so that about covers where to go to do your fundamental analysis. Finviz.com YahooFinance.com 
There are many other sites. These are just my favorites. You choose your preferences. You know, if you don't like Yahoo and you like Bloomberg, use Bloomberg. They have the same information. It's just a little harder to get to. And I just don't like the layout of that site. I've been using Yahoo Finance forever since I first began trading. So, you know, I know I know where to find everything here. So that's about it. I want to wish you all happy trading. And do your fundamental analysis before entering a trade. It really helps. Do your technical analysis, too. So until next time, this is the Zigzag Man. Have a great one, everybody.